Hello, hello, welcome back to the lab, welcome back to EE for Everyone. Today, I'm very excited, but we've got a bit of a problem where, of course, by we, I mean me. Uh, we've done some good work in this electronic load project, and we've gotten a lot done. And I feel like we're so far along that we're ready to start putting some components on a PCB and writing some software, connecting it electrically, like it's time for our first... Our first electrons need to flow. Uh, yeah, uh, for those that have been here, right, uh, we said goodbye and packed up the shop a few months ago, and that means I don't have any of my microcontroller dev kits, my tools, all I've got is a laptop, a chair, and a folding plastic table. So, yeah. Let's talk about how we're going to prototype this electronic load without that shop. All right, starting from scratch, we've got a project, we've got no tools, and we need to get by with as little as possible. I imagine that some of you might be in this situation where you don't really have a shop and you're just getting set up. So where should we start? What is the bare minimum that we're going to need? Well, at the core of our architecture, there's four things that I really want to connect in this prototyping. I really want to connect the microcontroller to a SPI ADC, the SPI DAC, and the display. Those are the components that we'll need to spend a lot of time writing some software to do the interface. And if I've got a dev kit on my bench while we're designing the PCB, getting it made, assembled, we can basically have the firmware ready by the time we get a prototype in hand. Then it's just down to testing the analog functions. Easy enough, and that's typically how I like to do things. So let's plan on that. That will be excellent. Excellent. So here's my general strategy. Breadboarding. That's what we're going to do. We're going to use a breadboard. Why? Well, you shove wires in, you shove in off-the-shelf dev kits, you just kind of connect everything with loose wires, and it's noisy, it's bad. It's much better to solder it all together, but it's temporary, reconfigurable, it's really cool. There's a reason why breadboards exist. There's a reason why they're useful, and there is still, even today, in 2020, there's still a place for breadboard prototyping, for sure. So that means that we are on the hunt for dev kits because if we don't need to have a soldering iron here, I don't want to get one, right? I already have a soldering iron. I don't want to buy another one, but there, there's a problem here. We've got a few critical components and the ADC and the DAC, one of them technically has a dev kit, but it's like $70. So no. <laughs> and the other one doesn't have a dev kit readily available. So that means that we're going from our mission of solder nothing straight to a, okay, solder as little as possible. And we're going to do the best that we can. Uh, that's not true. We're going to do the best that we can with as little as possible. That is true. That is true. That means we're going to need a few tools. First of all, soldering iron. We're going to need a soldering iron because we need to solder a DAC and an ADC onto a board. You can't do that without a soldering iron. That is tool the first. We're going to need some fine pitch solder. Why? This is a half millimeter? No, 0.3 millimeter. 0.3 millimeter solder. Why? Because we're going to be soldering half millimeter pin pitch parts to something to make them work. We're gonna need some fine solder for that. We're gonna need some solder wick because I'm sure I'm gonna glob solder onto more than one pad at a time. We're gonna need some tweezers because these parts are small. We're gonna need some side cutters for the leads of resistors and so forth. We are going to need a breadboard and some breadboard jumpers. Uh, just so you know, these are what I've got for the actual prototyping these sweet little dev boards. I'll take a picture and throw it up. Uh, basically what it is is it has half a millimeter pin pitch on one side and a 0.95 millimeter pin pitch on the other and it allows you to uh, solder a single component down and it breaks it out to a dip. I like this concept for one reason. It's cheap. You can get them. Amazon today. That's pretty cool. And that's it. Actually, I hate everything else about it. It adds a bunch of extra trace length, which will allow for reflections in our spy communication, which is not great. It's going to go into a breadboard, which is going to add more reflections, which is not great. Uh, yeah, actually, there's a lot about this that's going to be, as one would say, not ideal. Not to mention, there's no decoupling caps on it. 
Decoupling is incredibly important for digital components. That capacitance allows the small bursts of energy required to keep a digital system operating correctly when you're switching all those transistors. It keeps that functioning correctly and it stabilizes sensitive analog nets so that noise doesn't interfere as much with their operation. We're running a mixed signal DAC and ADC without decoupling caps if we use those breakouts. Not that I had decoupling capacitors here to solder onto the board anyway, but I suspect that will show up in our near future. I suspect we will see some interesting behavior because of that, but hopefully it works well enough that we can get a perfect concept done. There's two more things that I want to point out. Flux is not on that list, so I'm going to be attempting to solder some fine pitch surface mount parts without flux. So the only flux I'll have is in solder, which is why we're going to need so much solder wick. This is actually going to be a little brutal. Like, would I recommend anyone start with these kits? No. Like, this is not a kit. This is not leading by example of what you should have in your shop, because this is going to be infuriating. Working with this subset of tools after having the right tool for this job is going to be painful. Like, that's going to hurt. If you could just tin the pads a little bit, get your hot air station out, put a little flux on, it would take me all of 20 seconds to put these parts on a board. <laughs> but this is going to be a fight and a half, and I'm pretty excited for that. The other thing that's going to be very frustrating, like if I had to get two things more on this list, two things more, flux would be the first, and the second would be a logic analyzer. But I already have a logic analyzer, and it's not here, and I don't want to buy a second one. So what that would allow us to do is read the signals, read the spy clock and the data, and make sure that our spy operating mode aligns with what the data sheet expects. That's a very simple way to make sure that your spy system is configured correctly. You can make small tweaks in the code and just see that it, it operates correctly. Verify timings, verify all sorts of things. Very useful for developing a protocol like a driver like this. Almost essential, almost essential. However, we're going to try to get by without it, and that means we're going to need to set up a design of experiments. We're going to need to make small changes in the software, look at how the system responds, and iteratively develop the system to become closer to ideal. If you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. Coming up next, we're going to be prototyping the DAC and the ADC. Yes! It's going to be awesome, and I can't wait. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out our Patreon page linked in the description. It really helps us out a lot. So thank you. Yes, thank you to everyone who has decided to become a member. You're a big part of keeping and making this all possible. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.